Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, we want to hear from you. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about our Truth Skin Health products or formulations, ingredients, the longevity business, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Please try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We blog regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. And uh, of course, you can purchase all the longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. Love to have you on my team. We can help spread the word together about how important and powerful a nutritional supplement program can be. If you're looking to make a little money and you want to help people at the same time, if you want to start a business that really makes a difference or true difference at the most fundamental level in people's lives, which is their health, and make some money too, You can uh, sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 investment. You can also get your products at the wholesale price for that one-time fee, one-time investment. And, of course, you'll also earn thank you checks every month from longevity as 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 little as you want or as much as you want. Some folks are making a lot of money doing it. Some folks are making a little bit of money doing it. You make your you you make your own uh, decision on what you want to do, how much you want to participate. You make as much money as you want, basically, if you're up for doing the work. 866-735-2470 866-735-2470 is the number, 866-735-2470 is the number for the Brightside Ben phone team. They can tell you all about it, and you can also sign up right off the websites as well. And, of course, if you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we've been talking about the health strategy of calming the body down, activating the relaxation response as Dr. Herbert Benson calls it in his book, The Relaxation Response, which I highly recommend, all as it regards youth and building and growth and repair and all the good stuff about being alive. Yesterday, we talked about cancer and its relationship to cellular stress, to bodily duress. This, as we said, is the ultimate cause of cancer. It starts as a cell in distress, and the major distress of a cell is a lack of oxygen, also a lack of food, the mighty 90 essential nutrients, as well as the accumulation of toxicity. All of this leads to a subsequent energy deficit, a deficiency in cellular energy. Basically, it's a lack of oxygen and then a lack of the mighty 90 essential nutrients and accumulation of toxicity. The lack of oxygen is the fundamental reason why a cell turns cancerous. It's about energy, folks. Yes, it's true. The nutrients are important and the toxicity is important, but the fundamental basic reason is oxygen, cellular oxygen, the direct cause of energy, or the direct cause of cancer. It's a lack of energy. That's the primary initiating factor. All the other causes, whether it's tobacco or formaldehyde or or asbestos or uh, estrogen or all these other things you hear about causing cancer. This causes cancer. That causes cancer. These are all secondary initiators. 
They make it harder for a cell to process oxygen, to deal with oxygen. They're secondary. It's not the, it's not the asbestos or the formaldehyde that causes the cancer. It just that these substances, these so-called carcinogens, make it more difficult for a cell to process energy. And this is so important to understand because there are so many things we can do, our cells, to assure that our cells have all the energy they need to maintain health. If you think it's the carcinogens, if you think it's the environmental substances that are causing the cancer, you can't do anything about that. Well, you can minimize your risks, certainly by not smoking, for example, not taking prescription drugs, for example. And by the way, that is one of the things that happens when you take a prescription drug inevitably. If you take the drug long enough, a drug cannot help but create cellular uh, energy deficits. But it's not the drugs, and it's not the tobacco, and it's not the, uh, the asbestos, and it's not whatever. It's the fact that a cell is not getting the energy it needs. A, a cancer cell is a cell that is just freaked out. It doesn't know what else to do. It takes a lot of energy for, to run a cell, and it takes a lot of deficit for a cell to turn cancerous. Cells can, do, cells can, can withstand a lot of abuse. When a cell finally goes into cancer, it's just desperate. It doesn't know what else to do. Once the disease is switched on, once cancer manifests itself in the obvious sense as a tumor, rest assured the conditions and the environment of the cell have been energy suppressed for a long time and the cell has been starved, it's been suffocated, and it's been toxic for a long time. This is why cures, are, this is why we've been looking for a cure for so long, you can't find a cure for cancer because it's not really a sickness. It's just this secondary way that cells have learned to, to, uh, to de deal with life. It's this alternative way that cells have of manifesting or producing energy. That's why killing cancer cells, as necessary as it is sometimes, I'm not Pollyannish about this, but it's only a temporary fix, albeit a necessary fix in some cases. It's about the cell being desperate, so desperate it doesn't know what else to do. Now, I want to start talking about these PPD hormones and how they relate to cancer and how they relate to health and disease in general. The PPD hormones are, are youth and fertility hormones, pregnenolone, progesterone, and DHEA. And the reason these are our youth and fertility and, and growth and repair and anti-aging hormones is because they support cellular energy. This is how they work. They make it easier to, for a cell to utilize oxygen. And this is why they're so multifunctional. And this is why they're protective against cancer. The PPD hormones protect against cancer. Unfortunately, as we get older, these PPD hormones get depressed. They get suppressed. We make less of the PPD hormones as we age. That means we have less protection. That means cells have a lowered ability to utilize oxygen. And because cellular energy and cellular oxygen affects everything, every single thing, whether you're talking about heart health or brain health or the health of the digestive tract or the health of the immune system or fertility or muscle building or skeletal health or bone health, you name it. If it involves building, if it involves growth, if it involves repair, it's going to involve the PPD hormones because they help the cell get oxygenated. And once we understand the relationship between calming the body down and wellness, as well as the PPD hormones, we will understand how to deal with cancer. Under conditions of the elevated or, or sufficient PPD hormones, progesterone, pregnenolone, and DHEA, we get more oxygen. And when the body's calm, when the body is relaxed, we can utilize that oxygen more effectively. We're not burning through it as much. The anti-aging strategies, the anti-cancer strategies, the PPD hormones are about oxygen, the prime cellular energy component. There ain't no drugs, folks, that are going to upregulate oxygen. There's nothing your doctor can do to improve cellular oxygenation. There's nothing your HMO or your hospital or surgery or repairs can do to elevate and improve oxygen utilization by a cell. But we can do it ourselves. That's the good news. That's the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away.
All right, we're back on the right side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or anything we're talking about today, if you have a health challenge, you or a loved one has a health challenge that you want help with, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us help you wean yourself off your medication and get on a good nutritional supplement program if that's what you like. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can call the Brightside Men phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. And if you're interested in checking out some super premium, ingredient-packed, densely packed, active and functional ingredient-packed skin health products, head over to truthtreatments.com. Check out our Truth Retinol Gel, 5%, our Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Balm. Okay, so PPD hormones. Nobody else, This I just made that up, so don't look at You're not going to see that anywhere. PPD, I like the way that sounds. Progesterone, pregne, or pregnenolone, progesterone, and DHEA, they're all types of cholesterol. Tell that to the next bonehead who wants to put you on a statin drug. The PPD hormones are versions of cholesterol. You suppress your cholesterol, you will suppress your youth and fertility hormones. Period, end of story. Now, why would any medical strategy ever utilize something like suppressing the production of youth and fertility hormones? What is up with that? This is the idiocy, biochemical lunacy. Because a drug company spent a lot of money on research to shut down cholesterol production. That's basically why statin drugs, Levacor, uh, Mevacor, Lipitor, and uh, Zocor and the like are around. If you have elevated cholesterol, it's a chemical issue, a biochemical issue that needs to be addressed, not a pharmacological issue that needs to be suppressed. Elevated cholesterol means elevated blood sugar and, and blood sugar problems. It's the second point on our triangle of disease. Elevated cholesterol is a result of the triangle of disease. The PPD hormones are versions of cholesterol. They help cells get oxygenated. They help cells get energized. That means they're good for everything. And because they're versions of cholesterol, that means cholesterol is good for everything. Cholesterol is anti-aging. Cholesterol is youth promoting. Cholesterol is building and repairing. And there's no such thing as LDL and HDL cholesterol, more biochemical stupidity. HDL represents a bubble, and LDL represents another bubble, a light bubble or a heavy bubble. L for light, H for heavy. They say high density or low density. Just think about it as, as heavy and light. The light bubbles take cholesterol to the liver, the heavy, uh, I'm sorry, the light bubbles take the cholesterol away from the liver, and the heavy bubbles take the cholesterol to the liver, thus the moniker good and bad cholesterol. The one that goes to the liver is supposed to be good. The one that goes out of the liver is supposed to be bad. It's nonsense. There's only one molecule called cholesterol. There's no HDL cholesterol. There's no LDL cholesterol. Those are carrying bubbles. And cholesterol is youth and fertility promoting. Let me say that again. Cholesterol is youth and fertility promoting. It's health promoting. It's good stuff. In fact, as I've said so many times, it may be the most important molecule in the body. Arguably, I, I, a very good case could be made that that is the most multifunctional, anyway, molecule in the body. And not the least, for many reasons, but not the least of which is the fact that it's a form, that the PPD hormones are forms of cholesterol. They help a cell get oxygenated, which means they help everything. There's a substance that I haven't really talked about because it's a little bit complicated, as unbelievably fascinating as it is. There's a substance in the body called ATP. Now, I'm not going to get into the chemistry, so I don't want to freak anybody out, but ATP is how the direct form of, that energy takes in a cell, and it is unbelievably cool stuff. But this is how, when we talk about energy, that's kind of like this amorphous sort of abstract idea. Well, what is energy? It's kind of a, th energy is sort of a philosophical concept, but in the body, the energy shows up primarily as ATP. Oxygen helps the body make ATP. PPD hormones help the body make ATP. This is where the idea of cellular stress comes in. Cells can get energy, they can make ATP. When I say get energy, that means make ATP, ATP adenosine triphosphate. So cells can get energy in two ways. They can make ATP in two ways. One that requires oxygen, and that's called aerobic, aerobic energy, aerobic respiration. That's the technical term. Aerobic respiration is how the high-tech, sophisticated 
uh, uh, super elegant, uh, elegant chemistry, or, or cells that can manifest super elegant chemistry, that's the kind of, of uh, energy, of, uh, that's, that's the source of their energy production. That's high tech. There's another type of energy production called anaerobic respiration. This is low tech, high tech and low tech. Billions of years ago, cells could only do anaerobic respiration. Then something happened, something super cool happened. One day I'll tell the story of how that happened because it's really cool. Cells kind of merged with this other thing, another life form basically called mitochondria. And these cells, these primitive cells, nobody knows how this happened by the way. These primitive cells somehow merged with these other life forms that have their own DNA called mitochondria. And via this merging effect, boom, they became super high tech. They became able to utilize oxygen more effectively and produce more energy, i.e. ATP. Primitive cells, bacterial cells, and cancer cells all utilize this inelegant, inefficient way of producing energy, producing ATP. You get almost 20 times the ATP, you get 18 times the ATP from the high-tech production of energy versus the low-tech production of energy, and thus the problem. The second inelegant, low-tech form of deriving energy is experienced every time you feel the burn when you go to the gym. When you go to the gym and you work out or you run or whatever it is, and you put so much stress on your muscle cells that they run out of oxygen, they click in to anaerobic respiration. They click in to this inelegant form of getting oxygen or of getting energy. They click into this inefficient ATP production. They produce 20, 18 times less energy. And one of the byproducts of this inefficient, inelegant form of, of obtaining energy, this low tech form of obtaining energy, one of the byproducts is acid, lactic acid specifically. Lactic acid is a byproduct of this anaerobic, inefficient way of producing energy. That's why you feel the burn. And this is really cool. This is how amazing the body is. Lactic acid stimulates growth. That's why if you feel the burn, you get more muscle. Lactic acid stimulates growth. It's almost like a hormone itself. Lactic acid turns on growth hormone. Lactic acid turns on all the growth factors. It's like the body says, okay, we need to grow. We got a problem here. We're burning through too much oxygen. We got to get more muscle cells. We need to get bigger and stronger and better. This is why quick bursts of anaerobic respiration, quick bursts of this inefficient, low-tech way of obtaining energy. Where the heck? Oh, jeez. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to deal with that sound because I don't know where my phone is. But anyway, this inefficient way of dealing with of producing energy that produces acid stimulates building. It stimulates uh, muscle development. That's why you want to feel the burn. The problem is, is when you go, when a cell is doing this inefficient way of obtaining energy repeatedly, chronically, over and over and over again, it can't deal with it. That's where we run into issues. If you've ever worked out to the point where you've experienced this burn, you've experienced what it's like in the environment of a cancer cell. That's why acid, by the way, is associated with cancer. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have a couple lines open for you. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're talking about today or the longevity products or formulations or skin health products or if you have a a uh, success story you'd like to share if you want to contribute to the conversation 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side so we're talking here about energizing a cell that's what it's all about is energy energizing the cell the ppd hormones improve oxygenation they allow the cell to, a cell to make more atp they make a cell more elegant more evolved more high tech as opposed to low tech and aerobic cells aerobic meaning oxygen and aerobic meaning without oxygen the anaerobic cells are bacteria this is what distinguishes bacterial cells from human cells or from from other cells bacterial cells are very very primitive cells and they can only get very tiny amounts of energy this is why they have to divide so rapidly that's a very important clue right there so bacterial cells divide so rapidly because they're inefficient because of their inefficient use of oxygen. They're anaerobic. Hmm. 
How interesting. How, and by the way, not all bacteria are anaerobic. But some bacteria are anaerobic. They produce less energy. They divide very rapidly. Cancer cells are likewise anaerobic. They divide very rapidly. What distinguishes these primitive cells from these high-tech cells is this thing called mitochondria. Somehow or another, nobody knows how this happened, but billions of years ago, cells, bacterial cells, ate mitochondria or somehow connected with mitochondria. The theory was that they ate mitochondria, but nobody's really sure 100% how, ha sure how it happened. But the theory goes, one theory goes, that the primitive cells ate the mitochondria. And eventually, they started to form a symbiotic relationship. The mitochondria were another type of bacteria that could utilize oxygen. And between the two, the symbiotic relationship occurred where cells could now utilize oxygen more effectively. And this was the birth of the cell, the birth of the, uh, of the uh, they call them eukaryotes. That's the technical name, eukaryotes, the high-tech cell, we'll call it. This is how the high-tech cell developed. The low-tech cell ate this substance, this thing called a mitochondria, which was a type of bacteria, according to the theory. And now you had a high-tech cell. An aerobic cell, a cancer cell, is an anaerobic cell. It's a cell that functions under a lack of oxygen. That's pretty much all you need to know about cancer, at least to prevent its occurrence. It's all about the production of, ox of energy from oxygen. All right, got so much more to say. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about our PPD hormones, how they work, why you need them, what you want. I also want to get to, uh, hopefully tomorrow, maybe the next day, we'll get to a really interesting health challenge that women deal with, millions of women around the world deal with, uh, called endometriosis. We're going to spend some time talking about that because that involves the, not surprisingly, that involves the steroid hormones as well. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Robert in Las Vegas. Good morning, Robert. What's up? Hey, good morning, Ben. Thanks for taking my call. Appreciate good it. Good morning. Um, good morning. Once again, you've outdone yourself in the display of your obscene knowledge, and uh, oh. you're just a stinking savant. What can you say? Oh, nice. Thank but, you. Um, I appreciate that. Oh, I don't pleasure. know if I like the stinking yeah, part. Fault. I don't know about that, but... <laughs> All right. just, I'm just sure you here. got good uh, personal hygiene. <laughs> What's going on? Are you a chemist? Or, hey, Robert, are you in the chemistry business at all or the biology business? Good Lord, like... no. I'm not that smart, Ben. Okay. I'm, I'm no, you don't have to be that smart. I'm not that smart either. I just yeah. like chemistry. All right. But what's going on? How can I, we help you? But at any rate, we had an interesting article uh, recently in my local paper, The Review Journal, Las Vegas, about um, tonsillectomies, uh, which, as you know, when we were youngsters, uh, was really big and in vogue. Uh, since then, in the ensuing two and a half decades, uh, not near as many are being done. That's true. And That's true. I guess reasons were for they were worried about tonsillitis, strep throat, whatever. But I know that you talk uh, at length about the body not being vestigial. Everything there is there for a reason. God Correct, Amundo. Yes, sir. They all serve a purpose. So that then begs the question why do I, why does Ben, why does anyone need tonsils? Tonsils are part of the lymph system, they're incredib incredibly important. They're part of the ways the body protects itself from, you know, think about the area the tonsils are in, right? They're right where the food enters the body. They're extremely, extremely important, the lymph system in that area. And this is the reason why kids get tons have inflamed tonsils is because it's part of the lymph system and the lymph becomes clogged. So that part of the body is extremely important. Uh, it's a major concentration of lymphatic, of lymphatic uh, of circulation, lymphatic vessels. The lymph system is like a, has a headquarters there, or at least a satellite headquarters there. You know, the headquarters of the lymphatic system is probably the digestive system. Uh, but technically speaking, I guess that's part of the digestive tract where the tonsils are. So it makes perfect sense. They're there to protect the body from the foods and the, the stuff that, that could possibly get in through the mouth. Does so that make sense? Take out the tonsils, it's, yeah, it's like moving a garbage can. It's like uh, taking away kind of, except, that wood but now you have tonsils. less garbage cans is the problem. But yes, yeah. that's that's a yeah. very nice metaphor, actually, Robert. I like that. It's like removing a garbage like a good can. Metaphor. That's a very good metaphor. Yes, sir. You're right. That is a wonderful. In fact, I think I'm going to take that one. Thank you. You may. It's not copyright protected. Help yourself. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Does that help you, man? Oh, it absolutely does. Clears it up, and I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Good deal. Hey, have a good day. Thanks for the kind words. I appreciate it. All right, take care. No worries. Keep doing it. All right, man. Later. Later. All right, uh, let's go to Mike in Texas. Welcome to the Bright Side, Mike. 
Hi, good morning, Dr. Penn. Um, good morning. Pharmacist Penn. Um, I'm a great fan of your show. Um, I have sort of a different um, question here. Um, it's re related to ox oxid oxygenization. Um, I haven't been able to, to jog for the last two months because um, I hurt my knee. Um, and I think it's like an impacted cartilage, and it isn't um, or hasn't uh, been healing much uh, for two months. And I'm, um, I had this problem earlier, like eight years ago, and uh, the doctors there had a had a, a very different uh, strategy than the than the doctors here. Um, Where's there uh, in here? Two strategies would be. Um, immobilizing with a with a brace so that the, so that the knee cannot uh, make the 45 degree angle which seems to aggravate it or um, the other strategy being uh, don't put a brace on it and uh, just do certain knee exercises yeah you want help with that it um, kind of depends it kind of yes, depends I'm, I'm, it, it kind of depends on the severity of. Oh, hang on just a second. Mike. Better and it hasn't been getting better. Well, hang on a second, Mike. Uh, I get I get the pick, Mike. Eight or so weeks. Mike, now. Mike, Mike. Can you hear me, Mike? Mike. Yes. Okay. So yes. I, here I get. Let's cut to the chase because I get the picture of what's happening. Okay. If it's an acute injury, you want to you want to rest it. If it's like it just happened kind of thing. If it's the kind of thing where it's been going on chronically or it's, it happened a long time ago and now you're starting to get better, you want to exercise it. You see what I'm saying? If it's acutely injured, you need to rest it. If it's inflamed, it needs, the inflammation needs to go down. You don't want to exercise an inflamed knee. So I don't know what you got going on in there. Uh, first of all, you want to have somebody determine whether you have some, some kind of uh, a tear or something acutely wrong with the, with, with, the, with the knee area. If there's a tear, there's some kind of mechanical damage in that, in that area, you need to rest it. It needs to repair itself. And then simultaneous with that rest, you need to start doing other things. If it's the kind of thing that's it's like a chronic inflammatory process or maybe it's uh, some tissue deterioration, not an acute tear, then you can exercise it to rebuild it. So hang on and I'll tell you some ideas, okay? Don't go away, we've got to take a break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Mike in Texas. Mike, you there? Yes, sir. Okay, so it kind of depends on how acute the injury is. If it's a tear, something that's you did something recently and it's never healed up, that's one thing. You definitely want to rest it at that point and give the body a chance to recover in conjunction with doing nutrition, which I'll tell you about in a second here. And then secondly, if it's kind of a deterioration, like a general fraying or the sign of long-term toxicity, you have other health challenges, then you, uh, exercising can be very helpful. So it kind of depends on the condition itself. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, I haven't had an MRI yet. So. You'll have to see if there's, something, if there's something significant in there, you want to rest it. But how, you can do a lot of things nutritionally, however, okay? For one thing, digestive enzymes can be very helpful, taken on an empty stomach. Mm -hmm. I, I'd be taking a lot of them, by the way. Digestive enzymes have wonderful anti-inflammatory effects. Vitamin E is also very helpful, 400 international units of vitamin E a day. And this is true for anybody working out, too, by the way. All these are anti-inflammatory. Alpha-lipoic acid is another one, 400 uh, milligrams a day of alpha-lipoic acid. I'd be doing magnesium, a couple thousand milligrams a day. I'd be getting on the Healthy Start Pack. I'd be watching out for, about doing too much uh, oils and fried fats, which are incredibly inflammatory. That's what Dr. Wallach always talks about. You know what I'm saying? Like v vegetable oils out of the bottle, that kind of thing. You want to be very careful about that. And then, uh, and that's what, one of the reasons why vitamin E. That'd be the e same for olive oil? You know, if it's super fresh and it's in the fridge and it's in a dark bottle, there are some benefits probably, but you just got to be really careful. All vegetable oils. That's what Doc always talks about. And I'm not 100% on board with the idea of avoiding oils entirely because I've seen so much benefit. I've, I've witnessed the benefits that people get from them. But the point is very, very important, and that is they're highly unstable and highly inflammatory. Okay? Uh, also, glucosamine, chicken soup, bone soup, whey protein. Uh, probably a good idea to do some uh, uh, glutathione, uh, glutathione building with glutamine powder, a little extra glutamine powder. Keep your sugar down. It's basically all the strategies we're talking about all the time. Respirate.
making sure you're using sugar metabolizing nutrients, cell energizing nutrients, the B-complex in particular. B-complex, the reason the B-complex is so important, by the way, and so multifunctional is because it's, it's, the, it's the key element in energy production from, from oxygen. Oxygen, and this is simplistic, but basically oxygen plus the B vitamins equals energy. There are other factors. Yes, I know. Sulfur is important, coenzyme Q10, et cetera. But basically, uh, when you're talking about oxygenation, you're talking about the B vitamins. So you want to make sure that you're using a lot of the B vitamins. And that's the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. I got to move on, Mike. Does that help you, buddy? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Anything thanks else? very much. I, okay. okay, good deal. And uh, oh, well, don't forget... Go ahead. Uh, yes. I was going to say, uh, well, don't forget vitamin C. The, uh, the hang on, hang on, hang on. The Mike. elevation that reduce inflammation, if those affect the healing at all, or if they're mostly just for pain? No, they definitely, they'll improve healing. If you're, if you're so inflamed that everything's starting to pool up in there, they will, keeping your leg elevated can definitely help reco- uh, speed recovery. Rice. Oh, you ever hear the, I didn't the, know that. I didn't know that before. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the, the absolutely. The doctors here said something different. That it was only for that ice and elevation was m- more for Acute. pain than for than for actual. Well, emotion. they don't understand how the body. No, absolutely not. When the body, when you uh, the inflammation will slow down the healing process. Okay, long-term inflammation, which is why you want to do all your anti-inflammatory strategies. The body will stay inflamed. You're not going to heal. So keeping your leg up, ice, all of that will definitely help with the pain, but also the inflammation. And the pain comes from the inflammation. That's what pain is. It's a sign of inflammation. Okay. I got to move, Mike. Thank you so much. Take care, buddy. All right. Dave in Connecticut. Welcome to the Bright Side. What's up? Hey, Ben. How are you? Doing good. Good, good. Glad to hear. Um, I know we talked about a couple of times about the MTHFR and, and the oh, yeah. mutation. But here, here's my question is, um, I noticed that when I do take um, methylated folate um, right. instead of folic acid, you feel um, better. I do feel more energized. Okay. Um, so my question is, because I know most, or should I say 90% of the products that Longevity has only uses uh, folic acid. Yeah, most is supplements. Okay to, go ahead. Yeah, is it okay to supplement with methylfolate as Heck well. Heck yes. Heck yes. Even better, just okay. do your veggies. Do lots of veggies. That's, well, a, I that's do, what I you, do. I do. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, if you want to supplement with methylfolate, and if you have that MTHFR deficiency, it's possible. There are degrees of this, as I think I told you last time we spoke. Yeah. There's degrees of this deficiency. There's a, the full blown deficiency, which happens incredibly rarely. And then most people have a degree of it. Uh, I would say. More people have a degree of it than don't, from what I've read. But in any case, you can have it a mild case. of It can be mild. It can be, it can be more significant. If you notice you feel better, then by all means, that's what you want to do. Most people, don't, most people don't notice that much of a difference. But if you notice you feel better, absolutely, you want to do the methylated form. Yeah, because I didn't know if that's a folic acid in the methylated form, if they would, you know, kind of bump heads or whatever. No, they the don't system. bump heads. They don't bump heads. The, the thing about folic acid is if you have that, that deficiency, you don't activate your folic acid. You don't get the benefits of the folic acid. And without the benefits of the folic acid, there's all kinds of chemical, biochemical uh, chaos that can ensue. So you want, to be able, you want to be able to make the right form of folic acid. That's the issue. And so if you're taking folic acid and you can't convert it or activate it and you take the activated form, it's not going to affect the stuff you're taking. They're not going to interact with each other. All right. That's and then my, I guess my last uh, question would be is um, taking supplements with folic acid, would the methylated form of folate um, help break that down? Because I did mm-hmm. have, uh, when I did blood work, it was my folic acid levels were through the roof. <clears throat> Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, you, the methylated folic acid will con- con- conceivably contribute a methyl, I suppose, to the folic acid, but, uh, you know, to bypass your, the problem you're not activating. If you're not activating, it's kind of confusing, actually, but if you're not activating, if you have that deficiency and you can't activate folic acid, you're going to have a problem with methyls. So if you take methylfolate, you know, that can, buy, that can help you prevent some of the problems because you're getting methyl. The, the key word here is methyl which is a really interesting interesting chemical or molecule, as simple as it is. It's the simplest molecule there is, CH3. It's just two things. It's a carbon with, it's really cool, actually. Think, think of a C in the middle and think of four lines going to each one. 
or three lines going to each one, each, uh, pointing to the carbon. It's called CH3, carbon, three hydrogen. Simple, simple, simple. But it's super important because it turns on DNA. It affects genetics, among other things. It affects a lot of things, but it affects genetics, among other things. So you need to have those methyls. That's why SAMe can be so helpful. Have you ever heard of a supplement called SAMe? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, Sam, that's how SAMe works. It's, uh, it contributes methyls. And the ME uh, is part of the methyl, the whole methyl thing. I think it's uh, S adenosyl methionine. So it's actually the amino acid methionine. There's, it gets kind of complicated. But the whole point that you're making, uh, to address your point, is no, it's not going to interact with each other. I wouldn't worry about it. And yes, your methyl folate can, I can see how that would happen, how it could help lower folic acid and give you more energy. Okay. Okay? Thanks Thank so much for your call. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, we don't have any more calls, and we got about a minute left. So I just want to say a couple more, a uh, couple more things here about uh, this whole idea of mitochondria, which I find incredibly fascinating. You know, if you ever watch that show, uh, if you ever watch police shows and investigator shows, you'll see them talking about mitochondrial DNA. This whole, this whole uh, uh, mitochondria thing actually has forensic applications because you have so many darn mitochondria. You've got hundreds, sometimes thousands of mitochondria, and they all have their own DNA. Or all the mitochondria have a, a DNA that's distinct from our DNA. And so they can actually use mitochondrial DNA if there's only tiny amounts of blood or tiny amounts of biological substance because there's so many darn mitochondria and there's so much mitochondrial DNA. You're going to hear more and more about mitochondrial supplements and mitochondrial nutrition and, because now... A lot of chemists think, a lot of biologists think that there's this, that the, the reason we age is because of the mitochondria, because the mitochondria start to break down. They call it the mitochondrial theory of aging. And there's all kinds of supplements getting ready. And they're already out, actually, but you're going to see a whole wave of them. You're going to see it on commercials. You're going to see it on TV. Mitochondrial supplements support mitochondria. You even see, see, even see skincare products that will do it. Well, guess what? The way you support mitochondria is the way you support anything else in the body, by using the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, which represents cell food, by making sure you're getting enough oxygen, which represents cell energy, and by making sure your cell has a clean place to do its work. Oxygenation, starvation, and suffocation are the three causes of disease, and they're the three causes of aging, and they're the three causes of everything yucky about being alive. But it doesn't matter, because we can take care of, our, take care of it ourselves with the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, making sure you're practicing slow, deep breathing techniques and getting some exercise and making sure you're getting lots of long, luscious, delicious rest. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. We'll be back at you tomorrow with more good health information on the bright side. Have yourselves a beautiful, wonderful, spectacular day. Bye for now.